Hello and welcome to this week's Time Travel Tots with me, Emily. Today, we're going to pick up the story of Alice in Wonderland again. You can watch the first part of the story by pressing pause here and navigating back to the web page. It might be handy for you to catch up on the story so far. So, are you ready to find out what happens to Alice in the Pool of Tears? After Danny's story, join me again and I will tell you about why we have these Alice in Wonderland documents here at the National Archives. See you soon! Hello everyone, my name is Danny the Storyteller and I'm here for the National Archives. Now before I tell you any of the story, let me see who's watching from home. So I'm going to take out my binoculars, I'm going to have a look through and see and I can see Alice and I can see Zichuan and I can see Bertie and Mohammed and Bobby and Sam and Amina and I can see you. So thank you for coming to see me and Rafferty, our rat here. Rafferty just loves coming on the adventures as well. Now before I carry on with the story of Alice in Wonderland, let's do a few claps to get us ready. So give your hands a bit of a rub. Oh, can you show me a high clap? Oh, as high as you can go. Oh, and down low, as low as you can go. Can you show me a tummy clap? And a nose clap. Can you show me a book clap? Ooh, ooh, ooh. And what about our Wonderland clap? Now, I'll show you mine. Wonderland. But I want you to make up your own clap. So show me mine first. Wonderland clap. And again, a Wonderland clap. But maybe yours will be different. Maybe yours will be twisty and turny like Wonderland is. Maybe yours will be a smiling clap like the Cheshire Cat. So can you show me your Wonderland clap? Ready? One, two, three. Show me your clap. Wow. <laughs> Some great claps there. Brilliant. Well done. Now, last time we had our story, Alice was swimming around in a pool of tears. So let's find out what happens next. Are we ready? And I'm going to need some of your help too. Off we go. Alice found herself swimming around in her own giant salty tears. But when she looked around the pool, she saw that she was not alone. There was a rat swimming with her. There was a duck. Quack, 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 quack. There was a rather wet looking mouse. Squeak, 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 squeak. And even, and most surprisingly of all, a dodo, which, as far as Alice was concerned, was become extinct quite a while ago. All of the animals and Alice swam around until they pulled themselves out of the pool of tears and were now very, very wet. Dodo came up with a good idea to have a cactus race. And now a cactus race is a very strange race indeed, where you run around in all directions and everyone's the winner. Oh, how strange. So they played. Let's play ourselves. I want you to run on the spot. But when I say change direction, I want you to turn and face in another direction. Are you ready for the cactus race? Ready, marks, set, go. <gasps> running on the spot, running on the spot, change direction. <laughs> Running on the spot, running on the spot, change direction. <laughs> running on the spot, running on the spot, change direction. <gasps> running on the spot, running on the spot. 
until the dodo and the rat and the duck quack quack and the mouse squeak squeak and Alice and other animals too were quite exhausted but they were dry hooray everyone was the winner and Alice found in her pocket a bag of comfort sweets and gave one to everyone have you ever been to a tea party? Have you ever been to a birthday party? An Eid party? Well, Alice was invited to a Mad Hatter's tea party. I wonder if you had a Mad Hat like this, what colour would it be? Hmm. Let's draw it first. Get your drawing fingers. Draw a big mad hat. Whoop, 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 whoop. Now, as you put it on, I want you to tell me what colour is your mad hat. Maybe it's your favourite colour. Maybe it's your least favourite colour. Whoop. Ready to put it on. One, two, three, put it on. Oh, and tell me what colour is it? Wow. Oh, the colours of the rainbow there. Now, when Alice first got to the Mad Hatter's tea party, they said there wasn't any room. No room! No room! But Alice saw a spare seat and sat down anyway. At the tea party, there was, of course, Mad Hatter and there was the March Hare. And sitting between the two of them was... <coughs> a very sleepy Dormouse who, in the end, ended up sleeping right inside the teapot. Most peculiar. Now, there wasn't a lot of food at this tea party. Lots of arguing, lots of telling of riddles, but not a lot of food. So, I brought my own. <laughs> I've got my favourite strawberry cupcakes and my favourite lemon cupcakes. Now, if you were invited to a party, I wonder what food you would bring or what food you would like to be at the tea party. Hmm. Can you call out to me what food would you like at a tea party for you? Ready to call out big voices? Ready? One, two, three, shout them at me! Oh! Oh, they sound delicious and some a little strange. Well done. Now, if you remember, Alice had really wanted to go in the beautiful garden in Wonderland through the tiny door that she had been at first too big, then too small, then too big. Ugh. But she was then invited to the Queen of Hearts. And the Queen of Hearts, well, she owned the garden. So Alice got to go in the end. Now, when Alice got to the garden, she saw some most peculiar things. Croquet is a game played with balls and mallets. And the balls are to be hit through curves put in the lawn. That is how it should be played. But in Wonderland, things are never what they seem. The Queen of Hearts version had the balls being <gasps> hedgehogs all rolled up into their ball. And the mallet, you'll never guess, an upside down flamingo. What? Eh? <sighs> Sorry, hedgehog. Sorry, flamingo. Oh, how peculiar. Other sights were strange. The Queen of Hearts had some guards and they were all cards themselves. Of course, only the hearts. Around the garden grew the most beautiful white roses. Here, have a smell. Mmm, lovely, aren't they? 
but white roses would never do with the Queen of Hearts and she insisted that all of the white roses be turned red. Well, how do you do that, I imagine? You're right, by painting them. All of the white roses had to be painted red by the cards. Oh, paint and paint and paint and paint until they were completely red. If you owned a garden like the Queen of Hearts and your flowers were, in your opinion, the wrong colour, what colour would you paint them? Hmm, I wonder. Tell me. Maybe blue, maybe purple, maybe pink. Ah, oh, rainbow. Good idea. Lovely. All in all, Alice saw some most wondrous, strange, curious things in Wonderland. But eventually, she did get rather sleepy. When she awoke, she was back on the riverbank with her sister who do declared. Alice, what a very long sleep you've had. And Alice, scratching her head, replied, I've had the most curious dream. I wonder if Alice did have a dream or whether Wonderland was real. You'll have to decide for that yourself. For now, though, that brings us to the end of our Alice adventures. I hope you've enjoyed parts of the story we've learned. And thank you for coming with me and helping me. You've been great. Now, Emily's going to tell you a bit more about some of these wonderful images that helped make the story all those years ago. And I hope to see you again here with Rafferty the Rat for another adventure with maybe a different story to it. For now though, give yourselves a pat on your back, a shake of your hand, show me the book clap, <coughs> put one thumb up, two thumbs up, give yourselves an oh yeah, show me, oh yeah. You've been fantastic. I can't wait to see you again for another adventure. Give me a big wave. Goodbye. See you soon. Hello again. How did you enjoy the rest of the story? My favourite part was thinking about the weird and wonderful food to eat at the tea party and the cactus race with the dodo. This part of the story was inspired by the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. You can see a picture of the real document on your screen now. And let's take a closer look. Do you remember seeing some of these characters in Danny's story? I've had to zoom in because in real life, this document is quite small. And it's attached to something called a copyright form. Your adults will know what forms are, but between you and me, it's a document with lots of information on it. This form was all about John T. Mule making sure that no one copied his ideas. You probably remember me talking about John in part one of the story. We've got many of these documents here at the National Archives and it's pretty amazing that they can tell us about stories such as Alice in Wonderland. Tune in for more stories with me and Danny next week. We look forward to seeing you then. Goodbye.